The UK is bringing forward a ban on ICE vehicles from 2030. And if your country, like every country in the world, is moving away from fossil fuel cars into electric cars and they rely heavily on a tax system that taxes the fuel that goes into your car, this is going to leave a huge hole in a financial system on a country like the UK that relies heavily on tax on petrol and diesel fuel. Rishi Sunak, who's the UK Chancellor, has suggested a charge per mile system and he really was going for the best pun possible there when I think when he thought of this one and he suggested that rather than paying uh, on fuel duty we pay per mile. Today's video I'm going to look at how the UK government might implement that and how other governments around the world will deal with the influx of electric vehicles. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Now before we look into how they're going to track your mileage, let's look into why they're going to track your mileage. Fuel has been used as a form of taxation because it's been deemed a very fair and easy method to tax on. It's very easy to increase it on annual budgets every year, you just add a little bit more pence to the price of fuel, diesel or, or you know, unleaded, and that is one way of increasing tax and revenue for each government. Some governments have decided this is also a political way of showing how to they're going to be a great government by either freezing the tax or reducing the tax on fuel and it's often one of the things in the UK that many people vote for certain parties and it's deemed fair because the more fuel you're using the more mileage you're doing so at the moment we are essentially on a per mile charge system and obviously it doesn't work exactly like that because some people have more fuel economy cars than others but essentially the more fuel you're using the more mileage you are doing. And another way of taxing cars here in the UK has actually been what we call road fund license. And many countries also adopt the same thing by having what they call a licensing fee, I believe in America, which is where you pay a fee every year for your car to be on the road. And we call it here road tax. So road tax is a just a basically another form of tax. Now, a way many countries have been doing to incentivize cars all over the world is abolishing certain fees that would be applicable to petrol and diesel cars. And here in the UK, for example, if you have an electric vehicle, you pay no road tax. So they're losing out on another part of revenue. Rishi Sunak wants to introduce a charge per mile system. And because there is essentially no real fuel in an electric car, it's going to be proven quite hard. Now, some people will suggest that you can charge it on electric fuel, as in the electric that comes out of the grid, out of your house. And we're going to be explaining why that's one of the methods they won't use. Now, one of the metrics someone suggested is reintroducing the car tax based system so charging everyone a set fee per year for their car and everyone pays exactly the same car tax fee per year however this has some complications which is number one people with extremely low mileage will be paying exactly the same as people doing extremely high mileage and the government may divvy up this by dividing everyone or putting people into categories like taxi driver, truck driver, um, household user, but still you're going to have people who are reps for their living doing high mileage and people basically just doing low mileage. Now there is weirdly an environmental benefit to this which means people doing extremely low mileage might not have a car anymore they might physically just get rid of a car because it costs too much to keep a car on the road and that has a environmental ben benefit because people are buying less cars however from a government perspective people having less cars means less income which means everyone pays a bit more and pushes everyone up a level so that actually causes more problems for a government trying to plug a funding gap so that's likely not going to be the way now the other problem with taxing on this basis is like I said, if someone is a rep doing 20,000 miles a year and you've got someone like me driving to work and doing odd little jobs at 10,000 miles a year, for us to both pay exactly the same road tax system would be completely unfair because you're, you're basically incentivizing people to do more mileage, which is not the best idea. The other method is obviously looking at what Rishi Sunak's looking at, which is a charge per mile system. And I have a really good idea of how they may implement this, but let's look at some of the ones suggested by people in internet forums. Now I've seen a few people on internet forums suggest 
that they may just increase the tax, the VAT, that you pay on electricity. However, this has a, another issue which is completely unfair to people who may have a heat pump or may just have electric heaters in their house. You're basically charging them just to heat their home. They're, they're not using electricity to drive their car and you're increasing the cost for everyone, even people who do not have electric cars. And that's not a fair method because you're just calculating the amount of kilowatt hours they're using and not the amount of electricity they're putting in a car. Some people have some suggestions on how they might do this though, but I think there's a better method. They're just going to use smart meters to spy on us. That's why they want everyone to have smart meters. No, because yes, they could do it this way, but it would be insanely complicated and open to errors of other things that might have a similar frequency and similar sort of charge pull to an electric car that might be interpreted as that way and people being mischarged or even people finding ways around it and being undercharged. And that's just basically not going to work. It's a non-starter and Smart GB, who are in charge of the smart meter rollout here in the UK, they made it very, very clear that smart meters were going to be used for two reasons and one of them was to empower customers, not to be the big brother. And by empowering customers, there's a couple of ways. One was to make you more aware of the usage that your meter is using to cut wastage or find out if you've got some sort of power drain somewhere. It just basically makes you more aware by having one of these little devices in your house, you can see exactly what you're using to the second. And, and the idea was to try and empower you and give you more data. The other way they found of empowering you was inventing more smart reactive tariffs. Rather than the economy 10 and the economy seven meters, which were just set hours, you can have now invented tariffs like Octopus Go and Octopus Agile. Now Octopus Agile, for example, their prices change every 30 minutes. And I've just had a weekend where I was being paid to use electricity and they can do this because they can see my half an hour meter data all the time and if you're thinking of joining octopus and you want to support my channel and you don't want to support me via patreon you can support me by octopus by clicking the link down below i get 50 quid you get 50 quid and you might get a chance of being paid for electricity if you sign up for octopus agile now another way that these smart meters are meant to help is they allow the national grid to see the exact response and time they need to basically supply power. So they can see when the demand's gone up, which area the demand's gone, so they know exactly how to respond to the grid with turning power stations off and on as and when they need to. And that is the main purpose of smart meters because to use these as a cost per mile thing would just be silly when I'm about to tell you a really simple way of doing it coming up. Yes, you're right. Much easier to use smart chargers. That's why OLEV want everyone to have a smart charger. No, again, that would be a really stupid method of doing it. And there's a couple of reasons why it's a stupid method. Number one reason for why it's a completely stupid method is that anyone can use your smart charger. Your friends, your family, your neighbor, if they don't have a drive and you want to share the drive, you know, share the charging with them. And also thieves. Yes, they're stealing our electric. Why do I bother? No, <laughs> it's also another really stupid way of doing it for the main reason is it won't account for stuff like charging up at charges like rapid charges or even they could put it on the cost of that but what about when you get free charges like you get charges at Tesco and other supermarkets that offer you free electricity to for shopping there yes they could incorporate a part that you have to log into an app when you get there and register the charge but that just restricts the customer and restricts electric car sales the idea is to make it more free more available by not having all these extra barriers of logging in and, and slowing down the time it takes you to plug in so they're not going to implement calculating exactly how much power you're putting in this method it's a silly silly way of doing it and again you're going to have cars that are more efficient than other cars and that's just not a cost per mile basis your smart car data will just report you no now one method that's already available to us is an mot here in the uk a car is required to have an mot every 12 months and part of that mot is a safety check it just basically makes sure the car is safe to be on the road and the mileage is recorded as part of the MOT. Now there is a small issue that people are now currently typing in the comments because I can see them already. They are gonna be putting, yes, but if you buy a brand new car, it's not due for an MOT for the first three years, which is completely true. So there is a way of making sure that you're getting 
The data of the people that sell the car for the first year old or two years old before it's due for its first MOT. And that is when you sell your car and you change the logbook to the new owner, there is an optional box at the moment that says, what is the current vehicle mileage? And all you do is you stop making this box optional and you make it mandatory, which means that when you sell the car to the new owner, you tell the DVLA the mileage and that is reported for your cost per mileage for being an EV. Now, the other way of making sure that this data can't be manipulated or cheated by people who, you know, might lie and said they had less mileage and put the mileage on the other owner is once they put the mileage in, it could send a text message, an email address to the new keeper to basically confirm or even take a picture of the dash to confirm that that's the mileage they bought the car with. And you'll tend to find that most people will comply with just pure honesty and people who will try and manipulate the things will land themselves in jail for something that we like to call fraud. However, I have possibly a better solution that I thought of, which uses, let's just explain it. So what I think we should do is have a annual system, an annual system using the V5 and MOT data when you sell your car. And this again would use the, using both sets of data would mean that if someone sells the car before an MOT, it always gets reported to the correct mileage and the correct charge per mile. What we do by self-reporting, you tell the DVLA, I'm gonna do 7,000 miles a year. And this would be a set direct debit per month over that 12 month period. And then when you sell your car or you have an MOT, the balance is totted up either way. So if you've done over the mileage you suggested, they'll charge you the difference. And if you've done under, you'll receive a small rebate of the money that you've overpaid. And this is the best way of doing it because you have a checks and balance system with the MOT and DVLA data to make sure people are not misreporting or lying on the data. But you've also got the benefit that it's making sure that people don't have a big bill at the end to pay. Like you don't suddenly sell your car and have 8,000 miles to pay for and go, ooh, I can't afford that. By having a set direct debit system like this, it basically ensures that people are always paying the correct rough amount and anyone who tries to underreport will pay it back at the end. If you think that this is a solution that you think will work and the government go ahead with using it, then they can happily call it Ramo's charge per mile or something along that, that, that thing, Ramo tax. I'll, I'll be quite happy with that. That'd be quite cool. If you have a better suggestion on how the government might deal with this around the world, then leave a comment down below in the comment section. If you've interested in learning more about electric cars please click subscribe click that notification bell you'll be notified every time i make a new video check out my patreon page and also consider looking at my other ev videos if you're thinking of learning more about having an electric car thank you very much for watching today's video and i'll see you again next week goodbye